Hi everyone, I am Cornelius of Voice Studio East, and this is the ninth installment of the Singing Demystified video series. Previously in this series, I gave a brief overview of my register-based system for categorizing vocal techniques and promised a series of videos that will cover the registers one at a time. This episode is a bit special, however, as we will here explore two registers instead of one. This is partly because many people do not draw the distinction between falsetto and head register, but it is mostly because it's more practical to develop these registers together than to develop them separately. Nonetheless, there is a meaningful distinction to be drawn, with many singers being able to access falsetto but not head register, and with many other singers experiencing a bit of instability around the transition between the two. Falsetto can be found by doing a voice crack like this. Ah, ah, ah. The result may sound a bit exasperated at first though. Ah, so it will be necessary to find some way to reduce the airflow. We can do this by holding the breath in the manner demonstrated in the previous video. That is, not a hold as in CVT curbing, but more like being frozen in the middle of an inhalation with the glasses still open. This helps us keep the diaphragm still, maintaining it in activity so that we don't rely on its recoil for the subsequent phrase. To really get the most of this, try breathing into an upright posture with the sternum kept high and do not let the sternum fall down when attempting the subsequent falsetto vocalization. The volume might be very quiet at first. To increase it, we can open the mouth more and use brighter, sharper vowels formed with a widened tongue, much like how vowels are formed in chest register. Try practicing a bright sigh in falsetto on ah, like this. Ha! 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 As you go for higher notes in this quality, take care that the tongue doesn't pull back and down, creating a more muddy quality, like this. <coughs> to avoid this, it helps to raise the larynx a lot and open the mouth a lot for higher notes, and trying to make the sound feminine or neotenous. Lifting the cheeks a lot is also helpful. And there you have a falsetto that should be highly useful for pop, Celtic songs, and perhaps some Disney. To develop a stronger falsetto than this bright, breathy version, it helps to start from a head register. Head register is a whoopy sound that lies above falsetto and tends to cause the breathiness to fall away more or less by default for most singers. It can be found by making an unrestrained, uncontrolled whooping sound like people do when cheering at a sports game. Woo! Woo! From here, we can practice doing it on a sustained note, perhaps adding some vibrato and learning to do it on an E vowel as well. Try to keep the excited quality of the celebratory whoop though, as this helps bring more brightness into the sound and thus gives it a richer tone. If you can do this, you can do the basic form of the spacious whoop register, which ranges to about G5 or A5 or so, which is enough to sing most repertoire for mezzo-soprano voices. To go higher than this, we need the other variant of head register, the twanged head register, which involves adding pharyngeal narrowing and medial compression. We can find the pharyngeal narrowing by imitating a cat yowling, or a witch cackling. <laughs> My preference is for the yowl, as it emphasizes sustains and is more easily combined with a large mouth opening. Then, for the medial compression, we can use vocal fry onsets, like this. Ah, ah, ah. 
This can be fruitfully combined with the yowling exercise by doing a vocal fry onset into the yowl. For reaching high notes, it helps to allow the larynx to rise and not insist on too much volume at the beginning, though the volume should be allowed to rise as you ascend in pitch. If you are quite precise with your mouth shape, tongue position, and amount of pharyngeal narrowing, you can learn to access the higher range in this coordination at very loud volumes and without needing to raise the larynx. But in the beginning, at least, it is better to keep it light and nimble. If you've made it this far, even if you've skipped the twanged head register and focused solely on the spacious one, you now have the stereotypical problem of having a powerful upper range and hopefully a powerful lower range if you've practiced your chest register, but with only a soft, breathy falsetto in between. To strengthen your falsetto, start by taking the spacious head register lower in pitch on a slide, letting your larynx drop during the slide as if following the note down. From here, practice sustaining a note on U, making it as whoopy and strong as possible. Then switch to E, making sure that this one is also clear, that is, not breathy. The vowel will at first sound quite dark and muddy. Now practice making the E brighter and more distinctive, more fronted, but making sure that the spacious quality does not fall away. Try transferring some of this brightness back to the U, and then practice opening the E to E and the U to O or A. And thus you have strengthened your falsetto into more of a classical middle voice, the lower middle voice to be specific. As we go up in pitch on the open vowels, there will come a point where this quality will become hard to maintain and may either become breathy again or become overly dark, like this. <coughs> to avoid this, we need the spacious quality to decrease a bit as we go from lower to upper middle voice. This can best be achieved by a bit of twang, which can also serve as a kind of bridge between lower middle voice and twanged head register. In addition, the E and A vowels will need to use second formant third harmonic tuning. If you are not familiar with this concept, you can check the description for a link to my video on resonance tunings. For our purposes, though, it is sufficient to know that we have to modify the E and A to something like an E, and that there will be a certain sweet spot that makes a note a lot more powerful and brilliant. If you are struggling to find the sweet spot, one method is to start from O and make a very gradual transition towards E. If all goes well, you will have found your upper middle voice, which will gradually go towards E as you rise in pitch and towards O as you descend. As this same resonance tuning is often also used in mixed voice, call register and provincial voice, having a well-developed upper middle voice is very useful as you can use it to practice the resonance tuning before trying to apply it to a more challenging technique. Eventually you will become so fluent in going between lower and upper middle voice that you hardly even notice the switch. In fact, you were probably already making this same change happen effortlessly when doing the breathy pop falsetto. The distinction is thus not limited to classical music, though the terminology is obviously more evocative of classical than contemporary singing. Nonetheless, the reinforced falsetto used in rock and glam metal is built on the upper middle voice, which is taken high enough in pitch to become very bright and very powerful, perhaps even resembling belting, though it is ultimately still a kind of falsetto. Forgive me! Girl! 
lady. To develop this coordination, simply take your upper middle voice up in pitch, gradually modifying the vowel towards the ear, in part by increasing the amount of twang, and make sure to open the mouth a lot. To make it really powerful though, try seeing if you can keep some of the depth in there as you ascend, which will also become helpful for blending this quality with your belting, that is, call register. A word of warning though, it is easy to get caught up in practicing flashy singing of the party trick variety, but this can lead to neglecting the fundamentals, not to mention the risk of squeezing spirals if you don't have a robust lower range to return to. So. Instead of rushing to this glam falsetto, I recommend focusing on the fundamentals, practicing the transitions between lower and upper middle voice, and between upper middle voice and head register on all vowels in a variety of musical contexts, at least until you've developed a really solid proficiency at the basics. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. If you have any questions, whether about falsetto or head register or anything else, be sure to leave a comment below. Remember to like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thanks for watching.